Well, something I'd forgotten about earlier was that, uh, I'm not recording, yeah, okay. I have to bring a large painting to the gallery tomorrow. Possibly a couple, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do. But um, that usually ends up consuming quite a large part of the day. And I really, you know, if, if that day is, is uh, eaten up by doing that drive, then, and if I can wash in this area, I've washed in my barrier between the bottom part of the painting and the top. That means that I can go ahead and start painting in the sky when I come home tomorrow. We'll see. I'm usually pretty tired after a drive like that. I can drive all day in the bush. I can go four-wheeling and do all kinds of stuff and not be tired, but driving through traffic and all the... Okay, I should probably stop talking. Anyway, I find it really tiring because it's all city traffic. It's all a lot of silliness. So, I thought that what I would do is just scrub this in. And I can, you know, it's raw umber and there's a bit of residual ultramarine blue left on my palette. So that got mixed in. And I'm almost out of that. I think I have enough to do the dark side of these rocks. Oops, and because there's light behind this one, I may as well paint this in dark as well. And because there's light behind this one, I may as well part paint this in dark as well. Paint this dark in as well. are not going to be very colorful so I don't mind just going with raw umber. Uh, okay now I'm just gonna dig into my straight raw umber, thin it off with a bit of terps. So that's why I've jumped ahead on you. Not being unfaithful, really. <laughs> it's a necessary thing that I'm doing right now. You know, it's kind of funny when, when, uh, when, this is just a personal thing, but when I paint sheds, you know, structures, buildings, fences, boats, what have you, uh, you know, those are all things that have sort of a required shape to them and a required build. Um, and, and, you know, those sort of general rules of construction that you have to follow in order for them to appear plausible. Um, I'm very comfortable doing that. And I like painting buildings, or, well, yeah, I do the old dilapidated ones anyways. I also like painting nature, but painting nature, it's odd because nature can be almost anything. It can be so many different things. There's so much room for lateral interpretation of the stuff that uh, you'd think you'd be more carefree, you know, and, and I, I, again, it's just my thing, but I tend to get more nervous about the design of it. Now, maybe it's partly because I'm not copying exactly what I see too often. I'm often going off by, by memory and feel. Um, 
but I do tend to become more nervous uh, and, and once I've got an area drawn in just a natural painting uh, I question I question it more and become a fussier um, anyway that was just me blithering a, a, a sidebar this does come from a small painting and that painting well I'll call it a study I mean almost any smaller painting the moment you make it into a larger painting the smaller painting is a study because it's, it's, it's part of the of the number of steps that you'll take to, to bring it up to a larger painting right so um, and I remember doing that painting too the smaller one and I really liked how it turned out I didn't really think I was going to use it as a larger painting but yeah here we are yeah okay I guess that's it for now uh, if I go to the gallery I probably won't have a lot more to show you than this actually by the time this is published it'll be tomorrow anyway so blah 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 <laughs> talk to you soon well I'm not going anywhere today I think I'll save my trip my trip to the gallery for Saturday which oddly enough the way that I go will present me with better traffic situation so I'm just gonna hunker down here and I'm gonna play with this guy so I mixed a little bit of raw umber cobalt blue and alizarin crimson I need to lay something in here as you can see I've played with my sketch a lot I've dirtied up my sky can't paint on it until I've made it dirty so let's just sort of establish the edge of this of this uh, bank of cloud and I don't plan on washing in this guy I but um, I'm going to have a very light clean color against a darker dirtier color here so my light clean being above this this purpley gray so I think I would like to uh, lay that line in with terps with thinned off paint and let it sit for a bit and then come back and start painting in with the bit of linseed oil mixed it with my with my pigments okay I think I want it around there something like that and I do like this little rogue cloud to things and also um, breaks up the top breaks up the top of the sky I'm using this brush again that's just losing it but that's okay well, I'll take that off the edge of the painting for a moment I don't know if that design is going to stay like that but it's good for now and I believe I'd like to repeat that in this shape down here extremely dark values in the sky even the darkest values in the sky will be 
much lighter than any that are below here. Okay. There, that takes care of my edges. Now I'm going to be able to paint with oil. Without, you know, once I let it sit for a little bit, I'll be able to paint uh, above and below, within and without these lines, without contaminating my, my, my brush of, of cleaner colors, especially up here. Well, I think we're going to start on the edges with some uh, yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. I'm going to start off kind of green. A little less, a little lower value, a little less intense on the edges to try to um, keep our most interesting areas sort of down the middle-ish. sweeping up to the right a little bit. You know, again, my brush is not, my brush is not terribly loaded. I don't want ridges of paint. Am I blocking it? Yeah, I guess pretty much. Oh well, it'll, it'll get better in a moment as I move to the right. because I don't want that. And now is the best time to make sure it doesn't happen. Okay, I think that's about right. Okay. I think I was a little chintzy on the paint here. Should have put more on my palette right away. this charcoal line and I had one here just roughly reminding me that this is what I wanted to do
picking up a little bit of that grayish purple, but I'm not too worried about it. At least it's not, you know, overwhelmingly so. I'm sorry, I just have to put a little more yellow ochre out there. Actually, quite a bit more yellow ochre out there. And I need to freshen up my pile of ultramarine blue. we're going to be using enough of in the painting that uh, I put fairly liberal piles out. Go through paint pretty quickly when you're working on something of this size. That's a little too, too dark. It's fine. I don't want it matching the color exactly that I have. Place. You know, slight varieties in your brush strokes, slight varieties of the colors in your brush strokes is, is a fine thing, it's a very good thing. Okay, now we're going to go. just thinning out the ultramarine blue, in fact almost getting rid of it completely. And we'll probably start introducing hints of uh, burnt sienna in with the yellow ochre. Okay, I had to put some burnt sienna on my palette as well. going to be too is that going to be too orange Let me just add a little bit of cadillo pale here cadillo pale leans towards the greens a little bit so it might help to uh, mess up a little yeah I think that's better better. Oil.
we're just going to go to Yellow Walker. So far, so good, I think. I hope. Okay. Rather too dark, uh, rather too dark than too light, you know, as always. Close in on that on that round orb. Guess I don't need to say round orb, seeing as an orb is round. Well, typically. <laughs> spots I can let the paint set or dry for that matter and then just go over the areas that I want to work on. See, it's picking up my charcoal, making it a bit dirty. That's okay. The little irregularities, if they're just things I can clean up later, that's not a, nothing to worry about. What is this I'm using here? It's a number 10 round brush. 
It's okay. I wish it were a little broader. I might even grab a larger flat brush. In a bit here. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. And back up. Okay. I'm just going to grab a smaller brush to uh, to paint in that orb. What have we got here? My smaller brushes are so worn out. Actually, I have one new one. I bought it when I bought the, uh, when I bought the canvas. Put a bit of cat yellow pale in there. And a bit of white. It's contaminated with a hint of um, cad red medium, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, high value. Quite light. As you can see, you know, I'm going to put a bit of yellow ochre in there. Uh, just a little, little lighter than I want. Yeah, well, I can see already that I'm going to have to clean this up. Maybe I should have wiped out that charcoal a little harder, but... Alright, I'll just let the paint dry. We'll go back into it again. Yeah, that's really kind of dirty. <clears throat> Fine. Fine then. Well, for the sake of not making this video too long, I'm probably just going to leave it at that. I'm going to next begin working on the sky. Maybe some soft mauves, purples, warmish purples in places. Uh, we'll play with that, and uh, I will take you along, but that'll be on the next video.